ladies and gentlemen, rock and roll. Baby, everybody. Hey Josh and Aquamax subscribers, uh, my name is Michael. This is Aaron. This is my son Aaron. And uh, Josh reached out to me a few, a few weeks ago during COVID, in fact, when we couldn't see each other. Um, he was interested in one of my tanks, and uh, we also have a bit of a breeding program going. So, um, would like to take you through our place. Thank you. All right, so this is my main tank. This is my what I call my TV tank. It's a 50 litre tank, uh, which we had custom made. It's actually just a rectangular tank. It looks like it's curved and it's part of the TV. It's up. It's, it's actually just a custom made rectangular tank. Um, this TV used to belong to my wife, uh, her family. So from the 70s or 80s, we all had one at that age. And uh, a friend gave me an idea many years ago that he had an old TV and wanted to make him a fish tank. So I stole that idea. Um, I stole my wife's family's TV and went ahead and started crafting what, what you see now. Um, the main challenge really was how do I make it look nice, look realistic, but also easy to maintain. So um, what, people, what people don't realize most of the time when they see this is this is actually a custom built tank or cabinet. It's really just a box with a lid. It's nothing fancy, basic, basic carpentry skills. And I made it with a flip lid, so it's very easy to maintain. As you can see, it's just a rectangular tank, uh, made to size, made so it fits just enough to cover the screen, just enough height to leave me with uh, room for an LED light, and also to hide the water line from the front. Uh, I've got all my storage in here, so it's all self-contained. All my food, um, maintenance equipment, it's all sort of in boxes here, which fit in. I've got three of those stacked. I've got a mini, uh, I think it's a Hopper brand canister filter. So that leaves more room in the tank for fish. I've got uh, magnets which store my tools. So I use the tweezers and the, and the scissors all the time. And then I've just got a little thermometer. All right, so the socket in this tank is, um, it's more, it's also kind of a grow up tank. Um, uh, their CPD fry in there, they're not that old. Um, when they get a little bit bigger, I'll move them out to a bigger tank. I've got the yellow tree shrimp, which are quite active. I've got the crystal red shrimp, and uh, I've got some red neon blue eyes, uh, pseudomogul something or other. Um, in the, for plants, I've, I've tried to put some carpet uh, Monte Carlo here, really failed at that, it melted straight away. Um, as you can see there, there's, I think there's three leaves, and that's all I've got my Monte Carlo. I've got some Anubias, some um, s repens some Amazon, and some moss, and, um, and I can't remember what these ones are in the back. I've got some of those. They seem to grow, they all seem to grow quite well here. Um, haven't really had any problems with the growth, but I am having problems with um, uh, algae. Get a little bit of black, bird here, black beard here, and I also have uh, hair algae, which you can kind of just start to see. So um, I have got treatment for it, but I found that the treatment tends to kill the crypts. So I'm kind of, at the moment, I'm trying to spot treat where I can, where it's not too deep, um, or just pick it off manually. This is my, uh, it's about an eight to 10 litre uh, CCTV tank. I bought this monitor on eBay, oh, so Marketplace, about 20 bucks. And same deal, I, um, I made a new cabinet to make it easy to uh, maintain. Uh, I, tr I toyed with many ideas, whether it be slide out or, or uh, flip lid, but in the end, I thought it'd be easier if I just make a box which slides on and off. 
And I don't know if you can see that, I've got the lighting in the lid, and I've also got a feeding hole in the top corner. This tank itself, I was lucky, it was a Petworks Nano. It's, um, I did the measurements and I found one that off the shelf that fit, so that was really good. And it's actually a really good tank. It's got a built-in sump, so it's got quite a lot of filtration for a tank that size. So in here I keep, uh, it's, it's too small for proper fish, so I really just use it as a, as a uh, grow-up tank. I've got some CPD fry in here and uh, some killifish fry, and I also keep shrimp in here. So generally as they get not much bigger than this, I'll move them out to a bigger tank. Um, it's been a good exercise, this one. Uh, hard to escape. I'm still learning how to escape. It's hard to escape in a, in a, small, in a small area, but this one's been pretty, uh, pretty reliable. I haven't had many problems with this one. I get the old algae issue in this one, but I think the good filtration in this one has really made this quite a stable tank, even though it's really small. So welcome to my room. This is my fish breeding rack that we made out of my old fence. Um, and we've got five tanks, six tanks on here. Um, five tanks, yeah. So for the plants in my 20 gallon community tank, I just have plants like S. Repens, Java Moss, Amazon Swords, a lot of Rotala, and um, a few little pieces of Anubius, Nana Petite, and then up this tank I just have a few red cherry shrimp and it just has like some java moss and almond leaf and some Anubius nana petite that I got out from this tank. So for the livestock in my community tank I also have I have some chili 10 chili rice borers, um, 10 carrot, 10 um, crystal black shrimp and a few ottos. You have the temperatures of each of your tanks displayed nice and neatly in front. So how's, how have you done that? So my dad um, has a 3D printer. So he just printed up some frames for the thermometer so they sit nicely. They do, they look awesome. Um, so in this tank, I recently picked up some spotted blue eyes. So I got eight of them, two males, two female. I mean, eight, six females. And down the bottom, I have uh, seven, I think, um, Corydoris abrosis, which I'm currently trying to breed and I'm just conditioning them up right now. Um, for filtration, I just have a Kmart filter that has a new 3D printed um, storage compartment on it and a little sponge filter. And for the plants, I just have pots of Rotala, a bit of Java moss and a lot of Pothos or Devil's Ivy. I have the Indian almond leaf in there for a couple of reasons. One of the reasons the Corys like it um, they can eat on it sometimes. They like to hang around it for a bit of covering structure. And it also releases tannins in the water, which is good for the fish. For right now, I'm conditioning the fish in here with um, brine shrimp, live, brine, live baby brine shrimp, um, black worms, live black worms, and live microworms, and sometimes a bit of flake. Oh, so this tank is from my dad's old TV tank. So this is my, what I call my trailer park pond. Uh, it's a donated four foot tank, uh, which we've split up into four sections. And this is where we do basically uh, the other half of our breeding. Um, in this section here, we've got some killifish, which, killifish clan killifish, which, which have bred, but we're not trying to breed them. Um, but we've got our adult CPDs, Celestial Pearl Danios, or Galaxy Rasboras. And that's fairly straightforward. They breed fairly easily. If, if you've got the spawning moss, uh, we've got Sebastatang, I can never pronounce that word. Sebastatang moss, we use that in there. They spawn pretty much daily, and then it's a sort of an ordeal. You gotta pull it out and hunt for the eggs. They're very small eggs. Then we gotta put the eggs somewhere else because they'll get eaten. And you gotta have a fine net uh, cage because uh, the most, most breeding boxes, the eggs will fall through and the fire will stem through that, that small. Um, in the second one, we've got our red neon blue eye uh, grow out. So we've got a few adults there. Uh, and a lot of fry in there. And in this little breeder box, we've got the really small fry. We don't want them to get eaten either. 
Uh, we've also got some crystal black shrimp and some uh, yellow shrimp, yellow cherry shrimp, which we're trying to breed. The third section, we've got um, we've got the red cherry shrimp and an accidental CPD eggs that have fallen in there and they're growing out. Plus, we've got this box here, which is um, lots of lots of CPD fry, probably only you know two to three weeks old, uh, too small to have separate before they get eaten. And the last tank, we've got our cull cherry shrimp and our CPD grout tank. Uh, filtering this, we've got we've got a sponge filter a double sponge filter per section, uh, plus we've got a 2217 uh, Eheim canister filter. Uh, a little bit of overkill, but um, because they're sectioned off, we need something to do that sort of that me uh, mechanical filtration within each section, uh, plus it provides the agitation we need. So um, it's working quite well. We haven't, we've only had, I don't think we've had, we've lost a fish at all in here, and I did find one dead shrimp the other day, but other than that, we've, it's been really, a really stable. All right. This is um, a bit of an experiment that we've done, uh, which is proving to be successful. Uh, this is a Kmart tank, and um, we're using it to breed um, CPDs in. I've got three, we've got five adults in here, I think two male, three female. And uh, I've split the tank into two sections. And the idea is that the CPDs will breed in this Sebastian moss in this black cage here, um, hopefully on a, daily, or on a daily basis. And then it's got a false bottom, which then leads into the second section, which is uh, where the fry and the eggs will go. Um, I've got a filter, it's just a normal sponge filter in this section, uh, but it's got the return back into the main section. And what the theory is, is that um, they'll spawn in the moss, it'll get sucked into this section, and then the suction is created by the natural return of that, uh, of that water. So it just keeps going round and round. Um, I've used this before inside and we had pretty good success um, with sort of some uh, younger CPDs uh, but then we moved some grown up, uh, some adult CPDs in here and with the outdoor in the natural light that seemed to really spawn, help with the spawning, the natural light and um, I thought it would take a few days but even on the first day we put it in we, had, we, we got about 20 eggs um, and you, you see them, sometimes you stir the moss and you'll see the eggs um, you know push through into uh, into the uh, second section. So I put this, I set this up a week ago and we've probably got about 50 plus eggs in there and there's already about five or six fry, free swimming fry and about 10 um, fry that just sit on the bottom. So um, it's been pretty good success. Um, I potentially will do this on a bigger size tank so I can get some more adults and more grow out and um, not be worried about the stability of the water and, and ammonia spikes, but um, yeah, it was an experiment and uh, it's been successful. Uh, so this here is all the live food we culture uh, for our fish and fry. Um, this is actually what my son's doing, he does all this and I just uh, watch him. Um, this is a brine shrimp hatchery we, we built uh, probably about a month ago. Um, You've probably seen all these on YouTube. They're, everyone's, it's not a, it's not a unique idea. Um, I saw these in a shop just hanging like that and I thought that's a good way to do it. So we built this frame. Um, we've got three going, which is probably overkill. Um, you probably get by with two, but basically we just, um, we put eggs in uh, each day um, and we empty one and we feed the fish with that. So the way this works is really quite simple, really quite easy to maintain. It's just a pump, which, which, which forces air through these, um, through here. Uh, to keep them to keep the water moving, we've numbered each pod and and uh, the power point so we know which ones to unplug. And when it comes to feeding time, it's very simple. You just uh, you just pull that off, and that, as long as you keep it high, it won't run out. Then we get our feeding jug, and we just I know, hopefully you can see that we just empty into there, and that's it. We found we people say you don't need the heater. Um, which you may or may not do, but over winter we think we will. And we had two of them spare anyway, so we just picked up a third one. And um, yeah, this seems to work quite well. It does, we haven't grown them out, so they're quite large. They're, they're basically gonna keep them a day or two and they're, they're good for fry. 
Um, the other thing is vinegar eels, which are very similar to microworms, they're very small. Um, I think it's vinegar and some fruit and a bit of uh, uh, floss in there and then uh, with, with fresh water. And I think the water floats to the top um, and the eels make their way up and you just pipette them out and feed the fish with them. The other thing we do, which is probably the easiest thing, is microworms. Uh, you can't really see, but they're tiny worms. Um, it's just oat, raw oats and water, crush them up, put the culture in, and then within about a week you've got, you know, you've got culture. Um, and that will last for weeks. So I feed them a lot because it's, it's easy. This is the, probably the least effort uh, culture you can raise. And the last thing we use is um, black worms. Um, uh, we, we tend to either buy them, but we also have our own box where we um, culture them. Um, they do okay in winter, they actually do quite well in winter. We've just got a, a gravel, some water, not too, not too deep, and a cheap filter uh, to keep the moises out, and then we culture them. But uh, over summer, I think they struggle in the heat, so we, um, we buy them to supplement. We still have them alive, but we don't have enough, so we, we culture them as well. And that's our breeding program. Uh, sorry, our culture program. Hi guys, thanks for joining us today and uh, thanks to Josh for coming down um, from Acclimate to interview us and uh, have a look at our setup. Um, make sure you subscribe. We've been, Aaron's been subscribed for a long time, um, so it's quite a blast for him to, to, be, to be finally featured uh, on, on Acclimate. Um, yeah, and I hope you enjoyed it.